In 3-Gun, a clean rifle zero can be the difference between winning and losing a match. Before I head out to zero my rifle, here are a few things I check to keep from wasting time and ammo at the range. I ensure that I have a level and secure optic. If your optic is not mounted securely or it's not level, your bullet drop reticle will not be accurate and your wind engine elevation adjustments will not have their intended effect. When I mount my optics, I use feeler gauges stuffed between the flat surface of the scope and the flat surface of the mount. Afterwards, I use a removable thread locking compound and I only use the small end of an Allen wrench to avoid stripping screws. Iron sights should normally be level, however, the shooter should take care to ensure they are properly secured by following the manufacturer's instructions. Ensure that you use quality ammunition to zero your rifle. When zeroing your rifle, it is helpful to establish a consistent point of impact before making any adjustments. By using match ammunition to zero, you have a better chance of making sure that the cartridges you use to zero will perform like the ones that you'll use in your match. Check your local forecast. I find it's always helpful to check range conditions before driving down to zero my rifle. It can be very difficult to zero a rifle in heavy winds and conditions with poor visibility. Extreme temperature shifts and elevation can also become a concern when zeroing. If you cannot zero in the same conditions that you'll find at your match, you might consider verifying it when you arrive. Before you leave, ensure that you bring the tools you need to your range. Refer to the instructions of your manufacturer to see which tools you should bring to adjust your optic or iron sights. For iron sights, an A2 front sight tool isn't always a necessity. However, a front sight tool can be a valuable addition to your range bag. I would also recommend bringing a sandbag, shooting rest, or comfortable mat to lay prone. Bring a ruler and a marker. I'll talk more about those later. Ensure that your target is visible with a clearly defined aiming point. If you have difficulty getting a consistent sight picture on a conventional bullseye target, consider a different target. A reusable high contrast target that I've put together that's worth considering is a target I've dubbed the bikini target. It can be simple, cheap, and easy to use for most purposes. Simply take two sheets of colored paper and cut them diagonally. Arrange them in this pattern and you may modify the distances between the triangles to match reticle dimensions at certain ranges. Here are examples of some proper sight pictures. Here are some examples of some potentially misaligned sight pictures if your intended point of impact is the center of the target with respect to windage. Using this target allows me to see a 200 yard point of aim clearly with no magnification. Here are a few more aligned and misaligned sight pictures. Feel free to pause the video for another look. Determine your zero distance. There's no magic number. I personally zero all of my optics at 200 yards. To decide which zero will meet your needs, consult three gun specific shooting forms to ask questions. In the comments field or the info field are a few listed. Now it's time to start shooting. All of this time you spent preparing for the range should result in less frustrating time spent chasing your zero and wasting ammo. Get into a shooting position. Some prefer zeroing from a prone position, and others decide to zero from a bench. Just like picking a zero distance, personal preference and your individual results should play a significant role in making this decision. When you've taken a shooting position, find your natural point of aim and move it close to your actual point of aim, as close as possible. To accomplish this, I aim at my target, close both eyes, and relax. I then open both eyes and note where my reticle is drifted and reposition my body. For example, if my reticle is drifted to the left and I'm shooting from a prone position, I would move my entire body clockwise. Here's a video to demonstrate this technique through the sights. The target distance and motion are greatly exaggerated for purposes of demonstration. The fundamentals of shooting are always important, and when it comes to sighting your rifle in, you want every shot to be the best. Remember the acronym BRASS, 
breathe, relax, aim, sight, and squeeze. No part of this process should be rushed. Since I've already got my target at a short distance, I'm going to go ahead and take a few shots to get my optic to put bullets on paper. As a general rule, I find that if my bullets strike paper at 50 yards, they'll strike paper at 200 yards. It's very important to note that a 50 yard zero does not necessarily mean that your rifle will be zeroed at 200 yards. In fact, it probably won't, and it's a great idea to get the most precision out of your zero by zeroing at a great distance. At this point, I fire a 10 round group to get an accurate idea of what my rifle is doing at distance. Firing only a few rounds through your rifle to establish a group can become misleading when you're trying to determine your accuracy capabilities and actual point of impact. Mark your hits and note every adjustment. Note the differences between each shot group with either hash marks or shapes. Use your ruler to determine the distance that your group needs to move. Refer to your manufacturer's instructions to determine how to adjust your optic and what each individual adjustment will do. This method is my personal zeroing routine, but there are plenty of ways to zero a rifle properly. With all of these tools, you should be able to successfully engage long-range targets with the appropriate trigger manipulation and sight alignment. If this video has been helpful, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. Also, take a look at the comment field and info box to see other helpful links.